everyone, it's Robin, our Silent Crafts, and welcome to my studio. Today I'm going to show you how to take some charm squares and create a fun bunting. Now you can make this out of any size square you want. Today I'm using charm squares because it just is an easy way. There are pre-cuts. I don't have to worry about cutting them out myself. These are, as you can see, is a polka dot bundle that I actually picked these up at Walmart several years ago. For this project, I did use the 19 charm squares and I used 112 inches of binding that I made. You can use pre-made binding, you can make your own binding, you can get the bias tape that you can pick up at the store, you can use ribbon, you can use twill tape, anything you want to go ahead and have something to hang from. So let me show you how easy it is and how quick it is to go ahead and make a project like this. I'm using this fun charm pack of polka dot squares, but you can use any type of fabric that you have. Maybe you have a variety of leftover charm squares that you want to put together for your banner or bunting, however you want to call it. Now I used a five inch charm square and I made my little flag four inches across and four and a half inches tall. If you want something smaller, you can use the little mini charm squares that are two and a half inches. That would give you something really small and fun just to hang up. Maybe you want it somewhere near your sewing machine or across a mirror or something like that. You can easily start with a square of paper, fold it as if you were sewing it just to see what the finished size is, or just take a piece of scrap fabric, cut a variety of size squares, sew them up, and then just see what your finished measurements are to get the size of the flag that you'd like. Today we're gonna to do it with charm squares because a lot of us have charm squares and we tend to have a couple of leftover from this pack and a couple from that pack, and this way we can just have something fun hanging up. Now we need something to hang our little flags from. I'm just using basic white fabric. You can use some twill tape or some ribbon, or you can purchase pre-folded bias binding strips. Now I made double fold binding for mine. So I have this little pocket here so I could put my flag inside, cover up any raw edges, and it tucks it in nicely and there's no raw edges from the flag or from the binding strip. For my five inch charm, I wanted mine to be a half an inch wide. I didn't want anything super wide that's going to be really big and chunky up here at the top. I thought a half an inch would be nice and manageable enough to tuck my flag in and to do some top stitching to hold it down. So if you're going to be using like twill tape and you want to have that same look that I have, you'll want a one inch twill tape because you'll have to fold that in half to tuck the flag into this little channel pocket here and to stitch down. The same thing with ribbon. I did not do mine on the bias. After doing a little bit of research online, they say sometimes with actual bias cut fabric, if you're hanging your bunting up for too long or you use it over and over again or you have a lot of flags on it, it can cause it to stretch and it's not going to stretch at all. Totally up to you what you want to use for that. Now the process for making our flags is super simple. You can chain piece these like crazy and make a bunch of them in really no time at all. So start out with all of your fabric squares. Now if you want, you can mix and match these up. Maybe you want to have a five inch one and then you want to put a mini one from the two and a half inch and then a five. However it is that you want, you just want to have everything be a square. So we'll take our charm square and I'm going to turn it on point because I want to fold it from corner to corner and just give it a little bit of a finger press. I press these up here with the iron and you see how by using the iron I ended up with a crease that's a little bit harder to get out. I'll be able to just go ahead and spray that down with a little spritz of water and get the crease out. But if you just finger press it and don't give it a really stiff press with the iron, it'll make everything a lot easier for you. The stitching part is going to be super simple. We don't need to have that hard crease to keep everything in place. You can pop a pin in it if you want or a clip or just take it to your sewing machine as is. Now for those, I went ahead and I folded all of them at once, but this time I'm just gonna fold them at the sewing machine and it's gonna make the process that much quicker. I don't need to have them folded ahead of time. So what we'll do is we'll take these, as you see, it's pressed right sides together. Let's make sure this is all lined up. 
So using a quarter inch seam allowance, and I'm going to use a 2.0 stitch length, but you can go ahead and use whatever you normally stitch your quilt blocks together with, or whatever you sew with. Maybe you might use a 2.5. And we are just going to stitch all the way down. I don't back stitch at the top or bottom, but if you'd like, you can. I'm gonna sew these just like I would as if I was sewing a bunch of quilt blocks together. So I don't back stitch at the beginning and end for those. I'll show you what it looks like to chain stitch them at my sewing machine, but I'll just put one through and then I'll take the next one and again starting at this corner and I will just stitch down to the end and I'll go ahead and I'll stitch all of those. Now if you want, you can pre-fold them ahead of time. And again, if you'd like, you can go ahead and put pins in it. I don't use a lot of pins because I've spent a lot of time at my sewing machine. I'm really comfortable with projects like this, not using pins, but feel free to put a pin in. Since we're going to be stitching down this side, just make sure you put your pin out of the way and you won't have to remove it as you're sewing. And you'll just be able to pass them through your sewing machine nice and quick. So let's take it to the sewing machine and do our quarter inch seam and chain stitch it. I have a little piece of scrap fabric that I like to put underneath my needle just to get started. Then making sure that my corner and my point and sides are all lined up. I'll just stitch down. Now it's up to you whether you measure your quarter inch from the high point of the mountains on our little edge here, or if you go down from the valleys. As long as you stay consistent, we are just making some bunting here. It's not going to matter if they're all exactly the same. Now see, chain piecing, I didn't cut the thread in between. I just have one going right after the other, like links on a chain. And then I just take another scrap of fabric, pop it under, and cut off my chain. So after we're done sewing it, we're going to have this little thing. To ensure there's not a lot of bulk left in the tip, I'm going to take my seam allowance and I'm just going to trim it off a little bit. I want to make sure that I'm staying away from the stitching line. If you accidentally clip through your stitching line, you can just take it back to the sewing machine and restitch it just a little bit further over. Otherwise, you'll have a hole in the tip. I just reduce a little bit of the bulk by taking out that seam allowance and I'll turn it right sides out. I have a little point turner here, a little flamingo from Flamingo Toes, and I'll pop that in and I'll just gently poke out that tip. Now you can use a dull pencil or a crochet hook or not a very sharp knitting needle. You don't want something that's too sharp that's going to go right through the tip. Sometimes people use their scissors and if you're not experienced in that, it's really easy for your scissors because their tips are so sharp to go right through the fabric. Now when mine's done, I don't have a super sharp point on it and I'm okay. A lot of times you don't even notice it. And once you have your bunting hanging up, people aren't going to notice whether or not you have a very pointed bunting because no one else does either. Can you see my little crease from where I hand pressed it? I want to take this seam and line it up at that crease. I'm going to take this over to my pressing station and I'm going to give it a good press with the iron. And I'm going to do that with all of my little flags. So everybody's pressed and when you come away, they're going to like this. While I was over there, I also took this little flap and I folded it down and I gave it a nice press. Now you don't have to do that, but I found that it made it a lot easier for the next step because what I need to do is I need to take this little flap and tuck it inside. If I have it already pressed, it just goes in nicely and I don't have to worry about it being even because by hitting it with the iron and giving that little bit of a fold there, it's going to all go in nice and evenly. So there are all my flags, those are done. So now we need to have our thing to hang it from. I haven't found what this is actually called. I'm just gonna call it binding because that's what I made. Some people will use the bias binding strip. Some people will make their own bias using the bias binding maker. I found just easier to make regular binding. It's still gonna hang nicely. I don't want to worry about anything that's gonna sag or get stretched in a weird way later on. 
I don't have to worry about it when I'm stitching it down. I've seen it used online both ways, so whichever way you prefer is going to be perfect. If you don't want to worry about making any of this binding to hang your flags from, then you can just go ahead and purchase ribbon or the twill tape or pre-made bias binding from the store. You can pick them up at Joann's and Walmart, buy them online and stuff like that. And you can get them in a variety of colors. But I thought with the white polka dots, using white would work out really well. So for mine, since I wanted it to be a half an inch, I knew I would need to make it four times as wide. So I made mine two inches wide. If you know how wide your bunting is gonna be based on how many flags you have, you can go ahead and make it the exact length. I added 12 inches to the beginning of mine and 12 inches the end to make sure there's enough room to hang it up or to tie it around something. And then I just made a whole bunch. I joined mine as if I would with regular binding and I joined it on the diagonal. I'll add some links down below in the description box if you need to learn how to make your own binding. And we'll find some videos for you so that you can go ahead and check it out. Once it's all done and I have it all cut two inches, I fold it in half and I give it a nice press. Then I take each side and I bring it into the center. I do mine one at a time and I give it a good press. Fold it back up, and yes, give it another press. Now that takes all of my raw edges and it puts it on the inside. I did prepare one end because I know this is gonna be where I'm starting at. I don't know where it's gonna finish, so I'm finished that off when I get to that point. But what I did is I just took this, I fold it in a quarter inch, brought all of my pieces back in. It's easier if you give it a nice press. And now I don't have any raw edges at this end. I took it over my sewing machine and I just did a little bit of stitching right there on the edge, about an eighth of an inch. You just wanna make sure that it's within that quarter inch fold. If that's a little bit difficult for you, fold this over a half an inch. Go ahead and bring it up a little bit more so that when you go and do the stitching to hold it all down, you have this plenty of space to do it anywhere. You don't have to be super close to the edge. But I wanna hold off to the end to do that. I'm gonna use the quilter clips to hold my flags on until I take it over to the sewing machine to stitch it all down. You can also use pins, of course. I went ahead and laid out all of my flags in a color order that I want. If you're just having a whole bunch of random charm squares and it doesn't really matter, then you can just go ahead and put them in any which way that works for you. But I wanted mine to go the pink, blue, orange, green. I am short one green on the end, but that's going to be fine. Or you can just mix them up any way you want. I'm gonna start mine 12 inches in. This way, if someone needs to put it around a pole or something like that, it gives them enough room to go ahead and tie it. If you know that you're just going to put a push pin in or something like that, then you can start it wherever you want, but this just gives that little bit extra. So remember we have this little chamber in here, this little casing to put it inside. So I'm gonna start with my first one, and when I put it in, we do have that seam down the back, so we need to make sure that all of them are facing the proper direction. I have a little bit of a thread sticking out. I'm not gonna worry about anything like that because once I put it in this channel, it's all gonna be sealed in there. Nobody's gonna see it. So I wanna make sure that the top of this is gonna go all the way in. And when I lay it in there, I wanna make sure it goes all the way up to that center fold that we created. That way everyone's going to be laying evenly. I don't want them tilting off to the side a little bit like this. Plus it ensures that all of those raw edges are gonna be sealed in. Then you could pin it or clip it, whichever works for you. Now you have to decide, do you want your next one to go right next to it? If you have a lot of your fabric and you've made it into a lot of these flags and you only need to go over a certain amount of space and you wanna use all of your fabric, maybe you want them to go ahead and touch or you can even overlap them 
by about a quarter of an inch or so, and then you will have a lot of fabric all along your bunting. Now, if you only have a small amount and you need it to span across a certain area, like maybe along a table or something like that, then you can space them out. But I recommend that you space them evenly so that it's not all kinds of crazy. And if you want, as I mentioned before, you can make a large one and a small one. So you can have your larger one here. So it'll space out your big ones and you'll just have little accents there. You could just use maybe a white fabric or the same color all the way through a variety of colors just to add a little bit of fun to it. This is something you can really play with a lot or you can have a younger child help you choose the fabric and help you decide on the layout. So for me, I'm just gonna go an inch in between the two of them. I'll just use my cutting mat here to help me figure out where that's gonna be. Of course, if you don't have the cutting mat, you can just go ahead and use a ruler or something else. Sometimes people will just put a finger or two down and space it that way. Your measurements and how you do it really doesn't matter if you just want everything to be nice and even. It tends to look a little nicer when they're spaced evenly. Then I'll just take it and I'll just keep working my way down, spacing them an inch apart following my color order. So I'll continue putting these on and I will show you what it looks like when I get these all clipped in. And then we'll take them over to the sewing machine and I'll show you how to stitch it down. So everybody is all clipped in. And I did give myself 12 inches after the last one. And I did my little folding trick. Now, if you don't want to do the stitching at the end like that, you can just put a clip on this. And as we stitch, we're going to be stitching right along here. You can just go ahead and stitch along there. It'll leave a little opening there if it's not that big of a deal. It's just for bunting for tying it, so it's not a problem. But I just went ahead and stitched mine because I just wanted to show you that option. So total length now from end to end, including 12 inches before and 12 inches after, is 112 inches. And mine has 19 flags on it. It gives you a little bit of an idea of what you're going to need in length for your tie piece. Now, I have one, two, three, four flags with an inch in between. And that is 18 inches, just to give you an idea if you need to do any type of math and figure out what you're going to need. If you have rolls of ribbon, if you have a bunch of twill tape, or if you just want to go ahead and cut several yards of your just regular binding fabric, then you can just figure it out at the end and then do like I did and I just chopped off the extra. I think I had like 8 inches extra. So let's take this over to the sewing machine and we'll stitch it down. I'm gonna stay with my 2.0 stitch length. I have white thread in so that it matches. You could do a straight line stitch like I am, about an eighth of an inch from the edge to catch everything. You can do a fancy stitch right down the center, something that's a wide zigzag, or maybe your sewing machine does hearts or something, or I know my other Juki has like Christmas trees and stuff, so if I was doing a holiday one, I could put something fun up here. Just make sure whatever you're doing, is either going to run one way or that when you stitch it down, it's going to be facing the right direction. You don't want your Christmas tree to be upside down. So starting at the end, again, about an eighth of an inch from the edge. If you use matching thread, it won't be noticeable if you get a little bit off. Back stitch at the beginning, just so your thread doesn't come undone. The first bit can be a little bit hard to go through because it has that extra folded piece, but after that, you should be able to just go through nice and easily. Then as we start seeing our flags popping up, I'll just take off a clip. Make sure that my flag stays all the way up. I'll just hold it in place. And remove my pins or clips as I go. Take your time so you know everything is going together properly. And then just keep going until you reach the end. Make sure that everyone stays untwisted before it gets under the needle. It's really easy for this section right here to become twisted, so just pay attention. So there it is, all done. Everybody is connected. 
I have it stitched all the way down to the end. So remember I used 19 flags and I used 112 inches of my binding. This is a really quick project. I could see easily making many of these for the holidays. I have one started for Halloween from a couple years ago. It is in my UFO bin. It's an unfinished object. I need to pull that out and finish that up so I can hang it up in my sewing room for Halloween. Your scrappy word for today is pre-cut. Let me know what your favorite pre-cut is. Do you like to use charm squares? Do you use them often? Or maybe you prefer layer cakes or you use fat quarters. I kind of like them all. The charm squares are great if I want to do some type of patchwork. I love using them. I've been using layer cakes a lot over with my patrons. They are great if I'm making a mini quilt and I just want a variety of fabrics. But if I could only have one, I would go ahead and pick a fat quarter bundle. That gives me a nice piece of fabric. It's usually, what, 18 by 21 or 22. It gives me a good chunk of fabric to play with. And if you can get your fat quarter bundle that does the majority of the fabrics in the fabric line, so you get a good mix up, that would be great. Jelly rolls are fun too. Jelly rolls mixed with charm squares is a fun way to go also. Okay, I like all the pre-cuts. In my fabric room right now, the largest amount of pre-cuts in bundle form would be charm squares because they're all from the same fabric line, but I do have a decent number of fat quarters themselves, but they're not from a fabric line. They're just random fat quarters that I've been picking up and collecting over time. So let me know, have you ever made a bunting or banners like this? So thanks so much for hanging out with me. I love my polka dots, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.